Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This one's all about refitting the boiler to the LNER V1 locomotive. But this is not a V1 locomotive, it's what's left of a Great Western County class after Phil dismantled it. If you watched the last Steam Workshop video, you will know who Phil is. And he's currently using an anal probe on the boiler. Because this boiler has a very leaky regulator. I'm taking a short break away from the video to show you three easy ways to find your way around my YouTube channel. When you get to the home page by typing the address into your browser, the first thing you see is a profile of Keith Appleton. All you have to then do is click on playlists and it brings you to this page, and then you click on all playlists. Then you get a full list of every playlist so you can view the videos at your leisure. As most regular viewers will realise, I generally try and make one video per day. I can't do it every day. But most of the time, thanks to your support, via Patreon and PayPal, I can do this. Without the Patreon support, and without the PayPal support, I really cannot. And now, back to the video. This is the fitting of the boiler to the V1, and it was not a nice job at all. It was very difficult to do. I was quite surprised, I thought, well, you know, putting the boiler back on the frames, simple. No, it certainly was not. The first thing I did was trap my finger in between a frame stretcher and the boiler when I was fitting the boiler. So that hurt for a while. Not only was this job a bit of a pain, it was quite difficult to video it. Here you see my head visor appearing in the shot and part of my head. It's just that I need to see what I'm doing, and I'm in a very small space in the smoke box, holding a torch in my other hand, while simultaneously riding a unicycle. And in this clip, I'm not even balancing plates on my head. This is a steam inlet pipe for the third cylinder and the pipe enters the smoke box at a bit of an angle. These holes in the bottom of the smoke box are a perfect fit for the pipes that go through the holes. It's always a good idea on a steam locomotive to have some clearance because boilers and smoke boxes get hot and they expand and contract relative to the temperature. When I started to fit the short stub pipes that go from the superheater to the cylinders, then there was a major problem. They were far too tight. I wondered why originally part of the cylinder fitting was broken, and now I know why. If you've watched the previous videos about the steam workshop when I'm working on the V1, I showed the repair of the pipe going into the cylinder. But now because the pipe that I repaired is correctly fitted into the cylinder, it doesn't rattle about anymore, but the angle of this pipe, which was wrong in the first place, does not allow me to screw in the short stub pipe from the superheater. So even though I'd painted the running boards and thought they were just going to stay in place, I had to remove one of them, which was not something that I was expecting. And clearly this stub pipe is never ever going to be able to screw into the receptor that fits to the cylinder. It does not line up in any shape, way or form. So now time for a bit of ultraviolence with a round file. So how did the stub pipe fit in the first place? Well, it was quite simple really. The thread on the part that fits into the cylinder on this side was broken. In the video covering this, I showed how I removed the piece of broken thread by using a square file. And now I know the reason for the break. I think that when the part didn't originally fit, the builder closed the die and cut the thread a bit thinner. But this made it weak, so eventually it fractured. Now the thread is very strong. I made a new stainless steel thread to the correct size, and it's held in place to the original fitting using some Loctite 603, so that's never going to give way. With the hole in the side of the smoke box filed to the correct profile, it was much easier to fit the stub pipe in position. So now it's time to refit the running board, and I can carry on with the job. Both of the running boards on this engine are attached at the front by the lamp brackets, and here I'm refitting the lamp brackets at the front, and then the rest of the running board is attached using these countersunk bolts, or machine screws. Either way, they are 8BA machine screw countersunk bolts. Once everything was in place, I then mounted the smoke box permanently to the smoke box saddle using some 8BA hexagon head bolts with corresponding 8BA nuts on the inside. And in this clip, I'm just painting the heads of the bolts to stop them rusting. I'm using the same paint that I use for the running boards. You will notice in this clip that the boiler cladding has been fitted. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't video this. This was really, really difficult to do. It took two people to do it. Dave helped me do it, or should I say, I helped Dave do it. And both of us counted our fingers once we fitted the wrapper because it had to be sprung apart, put over the boiler and released quickly. This clip shows the front of the smoke box, and you can see that the blower ring and blast nozzles fitted in place, and the hardest job of all, 
was refitting the end of the superheater, as you can see on the right-hand side of the clip, to the stub pipe. It was just incredible. I lost the will to live. In the end, I asked Simon to give me a hand with it and see if he could do it, and, to my astonishment, he did it fairly easily. I'd been trying to do this simple job for round about an hour, so I was quite surprised when Simon did it so quickly. Because of the size of my hands, I do have a bit of a problem sometimes getting them to work well in confined spaces. Or so I was once told by a girlfriend that I had. That's enough of that, it's back to the job. I'm putting the fittings in place on the back head. The regulator's a bit unusual, it's a push-pull type, more like the American profile. There's no problem with this part of the job because my hands are not confined inside a smoke box. It was a simple job of just spannering the union nuts back in place on the fittings. The union nuts are slightly difficult to get to around the turret until I thought, well, if I use the spanner from the other side it's going to be easier. So I did just that, and in this clip you can see, yes, it's a lot easier than doing it the way I was doing it. I think it was just one of those days at the steam workshop. Phil, who would now put his anal probe away, was currently banging his head against the bench, because after all the work he'd done on the regulator, it still leaked. In the meantime, though, John's project, Little Bear, which was originally built in 1912, is taking shape. Here it is on its stand, with its cylinder cladding fitted and the smoke box approximately in place. Now that Dave's finished most of the painting, I thought it would temporarily fit the rear water tank to see what it was going to look like. And meanwhile, the Great Western engine, with the regulator problem, is sitting looking very forlorn on Phil's bench, along with all these other parts. And what he was doing at this stage was putting some of the parts back together because, unfortunately, he goes back to the USA after the weekend. Have a safe journey, Phil. It was good working with you. And it's also farewell to this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.